Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with the only one bed trope. I'm obsessed with this trope. I love the forced proximity and the forced proximity gets even angstier and more tension heavy when there's only one bed, only one bed. So I love these romances. I have a few other romance rec videos with this trope. I'll link them down below if you want even more recommendations. But anyway, here are 10 new romances to talk about with the only one bed trope. First, I have one of my recent reads. This is Baby Moon or Bust by Ava Hunter. These two characters end up meeting one night and just having a one night stand. It was great, it was grand. Six months later, our Alaskan reclusive man is in a bar one night and ends up seeing our heroine on TV and she's giving a house tour. She's an interior designer and noticing she is six months pregnant. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, what if that's my kid? He goes out to find her, realizes she's on this baby moon. Okay, she's on vacation and decides to go meet her up there and figure out everything that's going on. So the two of them are on this baby moon together um, and it's actually really fun. They don't really get off on the right foot at first, obviously, because she thinks like he's gonna take her baby away when that's not what he wants at all. He just wants a relationship with the baby, possibly with her. Of course, in this book, there is only one bed in the room they are sharing together. <laughs> um, I think the first few nights he ends up sitting on the couch, but then of course there's the classic, just just come sleep with me, just, just come on, so. <laughs> if you want a book that's also perfect for the summer, this one's great. It has a fantastic vacation setting, but I just loved these two characters and how much they loved their kid even before like, he was born. Like they are both like wanting the best for their baby. Next I have Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. Our heroine is a famous actress on a show that's kind of like Game of Thrones-esque, but her character gets unexpectedly killed off and she feels kind of lost. She doesn't know what to do. So she just decides to go on a little vacation, rent out a cabin on this property in America. Guess who comes to pick her up? from the airport than our hero. He is actually the grandson to the woman who like owns the property where she's gonna be staying. And so it's a few hour drive there from the airport. They don't really get off on the right foot because our hero is very grumpy, a very grumpy man. He is an ex ice hockey player and he ended up experiencing too many blows to the head, too many falls, too many, whatever the case may be, too many head injuries to where now he has like sometimes debilitating chronic migraines. So he kind of is very angry at the world, angry at his body, angry at the sport that hurt him so badly. And then he kind of takes it out on the people around him. But the more that he gets to know our heroine and how sweet and caring and thoughtful she is, he cannot help but fall in love with her, okay? The one bed moment in here um, is when the, <laughs> The grandma's kind of meddling a little bit. Okay, I love a meddlesome family member. A meddlesome grandmother is top tier for me. Anyway, there's something wrong with the cabin that the heroine is staying in. And so the only thing that's available is the hero's cabin. So they gotta share the bed in the hero's cabin, okay? This one is so fun. Another book that I think is like perfect for a fun summer read. The Coldest Winter by Brittany Cherry is my next one. I love me a Brittany Cherry book. And this one's really good. I know it's not any, we're close to winter time right now, but I still have to recommend this book. <laughs> Our two characters end up having a one night stand, okay, at a college party. And the heroine shows up for her student teaching semester at a high school. And uh, she finds the guy she had a one night with sitting in one of the desks as a senior high school student. And she's like, oh my gosh, what, what? <laughs> the hero has actually been held back a few years and is older than all of his peers. And he's struggling right now with his family life. He's experiencing some grief. One of his family members passed away and the heroine knows what that feels like. Her mother passed away when she was younger and she's kind of helping him through his grieving process. He's also going through a disability diagnosis. So there is that as well. Like this hero is going through a lot and the heroine is there for him every step of the way um but their relationship is obviously kind of forbidden because she is like the student teacher of his class and she would definitely be forced to leave college like kicked out of college if they figured out what was going on between them so they try to keep their distance at first because she knows it's wrong um but they end up falling for each other anyway there is a scene in here where the two of them are going on like a trip somewhere for educational educational purposes right but uh there's only one bed in the in the, in the hotel room. Another favorite is Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young. This is the romance between Lane and Matt. This is a friends to lovers romance. They have been friends, I think for about a year whenever like their respective friends got together in book number one. Lane kind of sees herself as a chaotic mess. She feels very lost in life. Can relate, my girl, can relate. Um, and she decides on a whim one day to use the inheritance money that her father gave her to buy this bus online and really wants to fix it up 
to make basically like a mobile home. Fix up this bus, make up a mobile home. And Matt is actually a mechanic. He runs a mechanic shop with his best friend. You can see back there, there's a mechanic shop, okay? Um, <laughs> anyway, um, he has decided to help her with this project she has. And when they're spending all this time working together, their friendship slowly morphs into something more and they cannot stop obsessing about the other person. They're both so stinking cute. They are both so cute. The one bed in here, I think both of them, they go on a trip together in the bus. That's all I wanna say, I don't wanna spoil things, okay? Um, I'll leave things to the imagination for y'all. Flawless is my next one. This is by Elsie Silver, the first book in her Chestnut Spring series. This is a small town romance series. Book number one is about Rhett and Summer. So Rhett is a professional bull rider and um, he's not in the greatest position with some of his sponsors right now. And so he kind of needs a PR babysitter to make sure he doesn't get into any more trouble. Enter Summer, who is the daughter to his, I believe, manager, if I'm not mistaken. And she's gonna stay with him on his family ranch, make sure he does not get into any trouble, doesn't go anywhere, doesn't hug up with women, like basically does nothing. Like she's there to babysit him. And obviously the two fall in love. There's that forced proximity trope weaved in there with her staying in the family, family, family ranch with them. And I'm not gonna spoil the one bed scene because it's actually really fun. So, <laughs> but another great book, a great start to a great series. One of my favorites I feel like is The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott. Like Emma Scott does it so well in this book. Okay, so our heroine in here, her name is Zelda. She recently moved to New York to try and publish her graphic novel that she's been working on like basically her whole life. It's her life's work and she's not doing the best. Um, someone broke into her very tiny, tiny, like run down, horrible apartment recently. She's like down on her luck. She ends up across our hero one night um, while he's working at an Italian restaurant she goes to. His name is Beckett and they kind of like have like a moment outside on the street, like talking about each other's woes, essentially. He's like, yeah, I'm short a few hundred bucks for rent this month. I'm gonna have to sell one of my things, like one of his prized possessions. She's like, no, 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 don't do that. How about like, I come live with you in your apartment? Cause it seems safe, right? Is it, a, I, I'm assuming it's a safe place. Um, how about I live with you? And then I can make up the difference and you just let me work in your apartment on my graphic novel. And so they become roommates in this shoe box of a size apartment. At first there's an air mattress for her to sleep on, but then it quickly pops. <laughs> he just tells her to come sleep in the bed with him. I love this one so much. And um, there's definitely like tension between the two when they have to share this bed. Next I have For My Lady's Kiss by Linda Needham. The one bed scene in here is absolutely iconic to me. So this is a historical romance. So the heroine is kind of like the mother, unofficial leader of this village. But then someone comes swooping in and is sent by the king to help run it, take over the estate and run it, right? The beginning of the story starts out with her being blindfolded by her brothers because her brothers just want her to get married because they don't want to worry about her anymore. She's getting into too much trouble, causing a ruckus. They're like, just get married already. Here, we'll put a blindfold on you. And the first man that you touch, who's standing in the circle around you, like you got to marry. And she's like, oh fine. She's just going to go along with it. She's not actually going to marry the guy. She's just playing along with her brothers. Anyway, she ends up touching a man and she's like, who is this man? Turns out it's the new like leader of the village. She is not happy that he is there. She's like, you don't need to be here. We have everything fine. We have everything taken care of. But he comes swooping in and wants to change so much. And she's not happy. She ends up pulling kind of like a few pranks on him, getting into all of his business. And he is sick of it. He ends up kidnapping her, bringing her to his estate, chaining her to his bed. <laughs> and is like, uh, you're not leaving this bed until you agree to like stop messing with me. And um, he ends up stripping her of her clothes, okay? And then putting her in the bed with him and sleeping in the same bed with her while holding on to her hair in a fist so he can like feel if she moves. Like he is that intense on making sure she doesn't run away and cause even more mischief. So this is a fun historical that is so underrated. Another one where she's chained to the bed. Wow. I just realized there's another one. I didn't even realize that. Um, is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. This is one of my favorite historicals that I've read in the past few years. The hero in here is really down on his luck. No woman will marry him because of the scandalous essays and papers that are going around the ton called The Scandalous Sins of Lord Sin. His name is Lord Sin, but he's not writing these letters. He's like, Who who's writing these letters? They are not true. They're talking about like the horrible debauched things he's done, like slept with husbands, wives, killed people, all this other stuff. And he's like, I haven't done any of that. What is going on? So he ends up tracking down who's actually writing these letters and it's our heroine. She believes that all he did, like that's that's what he did. Like she believes he's responsible for all the stuff that she wrote about when he's not. And so he ends up kidnapping her. That's the start of this book is he kidnaps this woman, ends up bringing her to one of his estates in the middle of nowhere, chains her to the bed. And then he tells her, you're not leaving this bed until you agree to be my wife because no one else will marry me 
because of you. It is your fault. And there's nothing else she can do. She's gotta agree to marry the man she thinks is a murderer. <laughs> so um, I love this one. It's so messy. It's so fun. Like I get a kick out of it. And yeah, he shares the bed with her. Well, she's chained to it. Meet Me at the Anvil by Kate Pryor is another one that's a historical. This one's more novella length. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Our heroine is arranged to marry this guy, but on her wedding day, she ends up jilting him essentially she has this fainting condition i'm pretty sure she had pots back in the day okay um but she has this fainting condition and um she just faints sometimes without knowing why and on her wedding day like at the altar she ends up fainting and the groom ends up laughing at her making fun of her and she's like that's it i'm done my husband i'm not gonna be stuck with a man who bullies me so she ends up running away and guess who follows her the best man <laughs> <laughs> who she's very attracted to and he ends up basically helping her escape and um it's the romance between the two of them they end up going to like a few inns together and they have to pretend that they're husband and wife and have to share a, a bed together this one is a such like a fun historical read and my last one is captured by the orc general by charlotte swan can we talk about how fun this cover is so if you want a monster fantasy romance one i definitely recommend this so our heroine um in book one we met her she is a healer and she works with potions and stuff like that. She really wants to go find her brother who she thinks is captured by the orcs in their land. So she travels through the land and she ends up getting caught in this trap, in this like net trap. And it's the heroes. He is an orc general. He sees her hanging from, from, from the net and he's like, what are you doing? He ends up saving her life and bringing her back to his people. She is terrified because she believes that orcs like eat people when that is not the case. Um, anyway, it's the roommates between the two of them. I don't want to spoil the one bed scene, but but there is one okay um but yeah this one's a really fun monster romance if you want to check it out anyways there you have it those are 10 romances that have the only one bed trope let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to but if you don't feel like commenting anything else you can leave me a bed emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all